Hello, today I'm going to show you how to use the SSC32 servo sequencer from Robot Shop to control a robot. First thing we're going to do is connect our robot, which is through a serial port, and there's an option here to have automatic location, or you can select an individual COM port. When it's on auto, we just need to switch our robot on, and the software will cycle through the ports until it finds the SSC32 board. Okay, now we're connected, we've got direct control of the servos. We can change the position by moving these sliders, and you can see the values change from the center value of 1500 up to a maximum of 2500 or a minimum of 500. This number represents the milliseconds required to control a servo and directly relates to the SSC32 protocol. But you don't need to know all of that, just use the sliders if you wish. We can also set a maximum minimum value. This is quite important because if servos hit other servos, they can burn out. So what we try to do is set the maximum range of mo motion so let's say max here and let's say minimum here in this example and that way it protects your robot from fouling against itself. We can also link the servos together so what I want to do in this case is select a group, group 1 on servo 2 and group 1 on servo 3. Now these two servos are moving together and you can see the hand of the robot is staying level because these are linked. Once we know where they're connected, we can rename these. So I'm going to call that base link1 link2 and hand. Okay. We can switch any of these servos on if you've got servos on different numbers connected to the board or we can switch them all on, all off or reset back to the default which is the first four servos. Okay, so that's how we can control the servos. Now let's look next at the sequencer element of this product. At the bottom here is the sequencer and here is a timeline with a, a series of frames on it. What we can do is record a position to a frame by hitting the little red record button and we can add additional frames by using the add frame button. Once you click on these frames it moves to that position and we can then uh, change that position. Okay, I'm going to group these back together because I reset it. There we go. Like this. And then record that to the timeline. We can then play our timeline using the, the transport controls. So go back to the beginning, hit play. And we can change the time of each individual frame by just stretching its length on the timeline. So we go back to the beginning. Now you can see it's a little slower. We can also change the speed of the overall playback by using the overall playback controls here. So at the moment it's at one times. If we make it two times it will now move twice as fast. We can also go the other way and go down to half speed, quarter speed, uh, whichever we like. Okay. So that's a sequence of frames and we call that a pattern. If you wish you can just build up more and more sequences on the same line and that's your complete project. If you want to be a little bit more sophisticated we can create multiple patterns and we do this by clicking the add pattern button and you can see here at the moment we've got uh, one pattern and it's called default. If I now click for a new pattern I'm going to call this one high. Okay. And now I'm going to add in uh, a new frame, record the position of that, add in another frame, and I'm going to make my robot um, go high, 
just to illustrate what we're doing. Record that position. I'm now going to make another pattern and call that one low. Add in another frame and make my robot go low. Okay, and record that position. So now we have three patterns. We have high, default, and low. And to string all these together, I'm going to make a final pattern. I'll call that one test. And now instead of adding a frame, which I could do, I'm going to add in my pre-made pattern. So that's default, high, low, and I'm going to put default in at the end. Okay, so now we've got a timeline here that we can see, and we can go back and play this again and again. What we can also do is delete uh, frames out of here. So we click on the frame and click delete. And what we can do is make a loop out of this. So this is a loop of my test pattern, which contains my three original patterns. And because it's going to loop around at the end, I didn't need the other default because it will go back to default. So here we go. And that will just keep looping until we hit stop. We can also edit these patterns on the screen and change the length of time of any particular frame in here. So it's quite flexible. There's lots of other features like you can copy and paste frames, you can reverse patterns, you can get rid of um, the frames butting up by releasing them and we can have gaps now um, so quite a few additional features once we're happy with this we can then save it to disk so we can save a selected pattern or all of the patterns and just save this to disk or we can also open any patterns that we've made before um, to use them again and again Okay, other features of this software are we have a information button and this tells us what all of the different buttons do. Uh, we have an emergency stop which kills our robot dead which is great if it's suddenly doing something it shouldn't do. This toggles so if you switch it back on it will jump into life. We also have a terminal window where we can send uh, string commands straight to the SSC32 board one of the classic ones is VER, which is the firmware version. If I send that, you can see it returns the firmware version of the board. And you can send any command um, that's available in the SSC32 manual using that. Uh, if you're interested in the manuals, they're up here on the Manuals button. And there's the SSC32 sequencer manual and also the controller hardware manual. Uh, this product is actually made with Flowbotic Studio and this is a programming language um, sold by Robot Shop for uh, graphically programming robotics which is fantastic and uh, if you wish you can buy that product and that will enable you to edit the source code of this sequencer because it comes along with that product and if you're interested in buying any of the products there's a little shopping trolley here with the purchase Flowbotic Studio or the SSC32 controller hardware, which will link directly to those purchase pages. Um, finally, on the right, we've got a calibrate um, switch, which enables us to calibrate each individual servo for the center position. And these calibration points get written directly to the hardware, so they, they are remembered by the board, so you only need to do that once. And finally, over here, we've got the firmware update button, which enables you to load in um, new firmware into the SSC32 to keep you up to date. 
Okay, that's it for the SSC32 sequence. I hope you enjoyed our little tutorial.